with a question and the question is why is it that the value proposition of 3d printing is relatively unknown today it's a fair question I mean if I were to ask people in the audience um, if they've heard of or read of 3d printing I'm sure the majority of the people would raise their hands fair enough but if I were to ask you uh, what is the value proposition of 3d printing or can you give me an example of an application rendered possible in 3d printing that was not possible prior to uh, 3D printing coming to light. I'm not sure many of you would be able to raise your hands. And that's a fair, that's fair, that's cool, that's, that's, that's fine, I get it. It's, by the way, not your fault. If it's anyone's fault, it's our fault uh, that we aren't able to communicate the message uh, very clearly. But one of the questions I keep asking myself is, is why is it time after time that I find myself at dinner tables or having a beer with a colleague or friend having to explain what it is I do? Uh, or why is it that I go visit prospects or potential customers and go to their sites and having to explain the fundamentals of 3D printing? In the same way that you can imagine going to a car dealer and asking what are the fundamentals of having a car? And having the car dealer explain to you, well, you know, it brings you from A to Z and it carries people along the way. That sounds pretty ridiculous. I'm hoping none of you have that discussion. But when we, have, uh, but when we start off uh, in our discussions about the value of 3D printing, we start there. And it sort of, it, it sort of uh, gets my mind going many times because this isn't a, a new industry. You know, This industry has been around for almost 30 years. In comparison, the internet has been around for longer. Uh, Wi-Fi has been around for 20 years. And actually, this year, Facebook is, uh, is celebrating its 10th anniversary. So 30 years is quite a long time. And yet, the value proposition of 3D printing hasn't really yet uh, come to light. And the reasons for that, I think, are falling into three spaces. And I'd like to just take you through those, uh, those three uh, in the next few minutes. The first of is the actual size of the industry. As exciting as this industry may be, it's a relatively small industry at this point in time. Uh, analysts and, and consultants are saying that next year's forecast is, is that this industry will grow to a $5 billion uh, size uh, market. $5 billion, $5 billion is, is, is nice, right? We'd all like to have $5 billion, but it's not massive. And uh, that doesn't mean to say that there isn't great potential, because when we look at the number of software CAD software versus number of printers out there, there's a great disparity. If we look at the number of companies dealing with product design and within that space of companies dealing with product design, how many of those have printers, the gap is big, so that gives a, a lot of hope and potential. And lastly, we see a huge influx of designers and engineers graduating from school like, ever, like never before, and obviously that gives us great, uh, great uh, motivation and great hopes that this industry will grow uh, further. But at this point in time, it's relatively small. The other one uh, element I'd like to explain in understanding why the value proposition of 3D printing isn't, I think, uh, well uh, understood at this point is because of the actual players in it. You have to understand that uh, 3D printing is pretty much led by a few players that have been in it through the very, since the very beginning. Stratasys has been a company that's been around since 1988. I joined Stratasys in 2005 as employee number 73. Today we have 3,500 staff members. So you can imagine the level of resources and, and ability to communicate and educate a market is very limited when you're such a small company. And, and so these uh, small players in this industry had very little funding, very little resources to be able to get the message across. And I think that's another reason. And the last reason I'd like to talk about is content. The ability to print something uh, in 3D, uh, sorry, the ability to print something from 3D content on a 3D printer uh, was relatively challenging up to like three years ago. And it's only in the last three years that we have seen massive movement in innovation and technology and software that allows literally kids to go to the internet, download files, and print them. But that was not the case some three years ago. Would you need to be a, a graduate in, in engineering or design to be able to create a model to then be able to print it? So content 
was very limited up until three years ago, and content has massively expanded in the last three years. And the noise that you're hearing and the movement that you are hearing today in the what we call the very ultra low end printers uh, is coming from content. The demand is driven through content that is available. So when you look at those three pillars and you ask uh, and, and you assess them, you, there's a very fair question that you can ask yourselves, um, and that is, well, is 3D printing a nice to have or is it a necessity? That's a fair question to ask because it's been around for 30 years. It's not so big. Five billion dollars isn't massive. And you'd wonder, you know, is this a necessity or is it nice to have? Because if it was a necessity, it'd probably pick up further than it is today. Obviously, I'm of, the, uh, of those who think it's a necessity. <laughs> and, uh, and I'd like to take you through that, why I think that's the case. And, uh, and, and the best way to explain it is through, oops, sorry, is through uh, an event, a very important event that happened in 2008, and that is the financial crisis. To me, and also to the company I work for, the financial crisis of 2008 was fascinating in that it absolutely made it very clear that 3D printing was a necessity and not a nice to have. And here's why. In 2008, like all other companies I can think of, we saw a decline in sales. Companies were freezing budgets, companies were shutting down, and we were, we were impacted by uh, sales of hardware equipment. And the figures were roughly in the double digit percentage figures versus plan. So it was a big impact. It, didn't, it wasn't fun in that sense. So these are customers that are thinking of embracing 3D printing and ultimately decided to put a halt to things and stop there and wait for the storm to settle and then ultimately buy this equipment later on. That's fair. That's, that's fine. We, we understood that. But what we found fascinating was what happened on the consumable side. Consumables obviously is, is driving the machines to create models as you see here uh, before you today. And on the consumable sides, we saw a decline in single digit figures in percentage, actually hovering to the very low single digit uh, percentage figures. Which meant that the companies that had printers in-house we're using it pretty much in the same way that they were prior to the, to the crisis. And so that, to us, to me, was a very important revelation in that this is not something that is just a toy. This isn't just something to have in your labs, in your R&D centers, as something to play with when you're bored. This is a real necessity in companies, big companies, small companies, despite the hardship, are using this technology in times of trouble because it has absolutely become part of their product development and they can't do without it. And that was a very important revelation for us and for me, and that was 2008, six years ago. And obviously you can imagine six years in a, in a high-tech environment such as in 3D printing, a lot of innovation has, brought, has been brought forward since. So what are these values? What, uh, what are these values? And, and, and I'll try to take you through just a few, uh, and there's many more, so forgive me for not doing justice to all of in the industry in the next five minutes. One great value is in communication. They say uh, uh, one picture speaks a thousand words. Imagine what a model does. Imagine the power of sitting in a room with other engineers and being able to, to express your abilities in form of a model that you then sit together and discuss and challenge and optimize. Imagine a kid that goes home after work, uh, after school, sorry, and uh, shows his parents um, something that he or she created out of nothing, and the power that that brings that child in terms of innovation and creativity. Communication is greatly enhanced in ways never done before. This is a great case study of a customer of ours, um, Studio D3 in Mexico. And the model that you see in front of you, it's actually taken from uh, top down, but it's actually a vase. And it's not designed through your traditional uh, CAD software. It's actually a project called Love. And the model that you see in front of you is actually the expression of love through 
uh, through sensors placed on people's, uh, on people, uh, 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 you know, voice, uh, heart, and brain movement, they were able to encapsulate um, th those, those, uh, those elements and create a physical model to express love in ways that were never done before. Just another example of communication, how communication can be expressed in form of a physical object printed on a 3D printer. A nice example in the medical field, showing the ability to make things faster and better. This is a customer in Japan. The model that you see here is a physical printed 3D model in color uh, of a liver at actual size. And obviously here the surgeon is practicing prior to surgery to ensure that uh, he's doing uh, the right thing uh, when, when the real moment comes to, comes to being. And of course, this is allowing for reduction in, 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 in possible mistakes made and hopefully a faster or speedier recovery uh, in that sense as well. So in the sense of bringing uh, products to market faster and better, it definitely is of value in 3D printing. Meet uh, Snowball. Snowball is a dog in Australia. I doubt he knows we're talking about him today. But this is a customer of ours in Australia, and it's in the veterinarian field. And this is uh, a dog that couldn't walk because he had a dislocation, uh, um, dislocated elbow. And, uh, sorry, disjointed elbow. And basically here, the dislocated elbow was scanned, was printed, and prior to operation was understood so that uh, the, the, the veterinarian uh, operated uh, Snowball and Snowball can walk. What is valuable here to understand is customization and the value of customization in 3D printing. MakerBot, Thinkiverse, 250,000 files on Thinkiverse on the internet today, part, part of the MakerBot community where you are capable of being your own innovator, your own creator, taking a file, downloading it, customizing it, and printing it. Uh, tremendous value. You, we are bringing craftsmanship to home, as we call it. Uh, this is fundamentally changing the way people create things. Think of the Think of the fact that you can sit at home, have an idea, and cut, print it, customize it, and make use of it at home. 250,000 files, over a million downloads per month. Massive. Fashion, just to show uh, some aesthetics. Nary Oxman, very beautiful parts being uh, worn uh, in fashion. So 3D printing is also embedding, embracing itself in the space of fashion. Very interestingly is in the world of manufacturing. This is uh, NASA. This is uh, a, 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 a space a human uh, uh, supporting rover uh, that is planned for space. 70 parts of this rover were printed and assembled onto the end use uh, product. 70 parts, which means that 3D printing not only can be used for prototyping, but actually is now venturing into the grounds of manufacturing. And this is the next big thing in the 3D printing space, where parts can not only be used for prototyping, but actually fitted onto, uh, onto elements as end use parts. And lastly, I want to use a, a, a case study from a customer in Japan, uh, Peibei. Peibei is really cool because it's a tiny company. It's a group of graduates that decided to set up a company together and basically, the whole idea of this uh, PayBay is that you can have a camera uh, watching uh, your baby uh, during your sleep and not have this awkward device, but have it as a toy. What's cool about PayBay, which I like, is the fundamental flipping of the business model that, they're, that they use. It's not only a prototype uh, being shown and being used, but also an entire different go-to-market thanks to 3D printing. The part was printed, was painted, they went to their customers, they assessed the value proposition in the market, they had focus groups, and only then did they go into uh, what is called a pre-series production and massive production for the, for, for in larger scales. So in this case, you can see uh, a business model that is altered in a small company through 3D printing, giving that company a competitive advantage and an ability to play against, against the bigger players. So with all that having been said, um, I guess, the message I would like to come across uh, uh, to you uh, today is that uh, 3D printing is real. It is, it, it is, it is a necessity. It, is, it has tremendous value to it, uh, tremendous potential for it in the 20 years, 30 years to come. I'm absolutely sure 
that if I were to watch this, uh, this uh, video 20 or 30 years from now, 3D printing would have a whole different uh, facade to it than it has today. But even today, 3D printing has great uh, potential. And my recommendation is to anyone in this audience to really try it out. Try it out in any way you form. Try it out by using a service or try it out by having a printer in house. Uh, but uh, if you are not part of the 3D printing story and you are in the business of product design, you're falling behind. And that's the message I'd like to, uh, to come across today. There is tremendous value in 3D printing and I do hope that you embrace it because it's, it's great stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you.